Hi and welcome to the Piccolo channel. This time I'd like to give a little tutorial about the meaning of the stacking parameter. What do they do and how can you use them to improve your stacking result? There are a number of parameters listed and we are going to look at them step by step. So to start and to find the stacking parameters you go to stacking parameters, set stacking parameters and you get this little panel or you can simply press the F2 key and you get the same thing. In the beginning not all of the parameters are listed. Some of them are still inactive and not shown to keep it as simple as possible. Now let's start with the first line. Noise suppression. What does it mean? You should know the stacking routine looks for structures. Structures are indicated by variations of pixel values and pixel values means RGB, red, green and blue values which are between 0 and 255 and the variation can depend and be caused by edges, by peaks or just by noise. Yeah, and we don't want to have noise and therefore noise suppression can be helpful. We should avoid to have noise by using low ISO values when you take the pictures. Noise suppression can also mask or hide structures if it's too strong and therefore we have to find the right value, the right settings for it. It depends on the picture you have. At noise suppression of zero, Piccolo tries to see a structure everywhere. And well as above zero, gray areas might occur, and these indicate areas without detail, so there's nothing. I'm showing my examples on this little diatom, which can be downloaded from the Picole tutorial site, or it's installed if you install Picole and use the um, installer, you'll get it on your computer already. And there's another tutorial, number one, which shows the stacking of this diatom. I'm not going to repeat it here. And we have areas with nothing, and we have areas with fine structures, and we have larger structures as well. And we'll see how to find the parameters to get, good, to get a good stacking result. So the first is the noise suppression. We have it to zero. And what we see here, sorry, I should say, is the overlay of the depth map, which goes from blue over green to yellow. Blue is in the back, green in the middle, yellow is on top. And it's overlaying with the stacked image. And then you can see what you have at the different positions. It's very helpful to judge uh, your result. At a value of zero, there is a structure recognized everywhere, and this is only noise you can see here. At a value of 1, it's still a structure scene, but you see the noise has been reduced, so 1 is almost good to have at minimum for noise suppression. It gives a little bit smoother results, and it does not change anything in these areas where real structures are. Then I try to value of 3, and you see there are these gray areas coming up where nothing is seen anymore and actually 3 is not enough. 4, 5, 6, 7 might be better and 20, which I tried here, is definitely too much because we have loss of information about structures in, uh, in our uh, object. Okay, there's another thing. When we have values above 1 there is a new line that says narrow or widen patches and it can be plus or minus values and these help 
to modify the edges between structure and non-structured areas. You can mo make the structures a little bit wider or more narrow. And I'm going to show in the next slide here how it is. So this is another uh, diatom again. Noise suppression zero, noise. Noise suppression 18. It's fine here, it's fine here. But here we have lost some information about the diatom. We could make this value lower, the noise suppression, or we could make a widen the patches. Then this will get a little bit wider. Okay, we will have too much here, but here these areas are filled and uh, it's a compromise. And actually you are able to combine the results, the maps and the stacked images finally to get the perfect results at the end. Okay, let's look at the next line, which is filter. And the filter is a very important thing. It's the mechanism that looks for structures in your images. And the three filters can be compared to peepholes, either a small one, a medium-sized one, or a big one are used to detect structures. And there's one setting, the default set setting is smart, and that means the program will automatically use one of these filters or mixtures of these filters on different areas. It starts to seek with a small filter. If it doesn't see anything, it makes it bigger and bigger to detect finally structures. And uh, smart is mostly a good choice here, but you could also make a fixed constant value. Then the whole image is uh, scanned with a filter size of 1, 2, 10. And you could again eventually combine the results and the maps to get the uh, perfect result. Let's look at an example again our uh, diatom. You see with the filter size of 1 we get very nice fine structures but the larger structures here are not really good. With, fi with 5 as filter setting you see this is a little bit less crispy. There's loss for the fine structures but this is much better and if you go to filter setting of 10 you have lost most of these fine things and this is very broad even this is too much you get additional structures here at the edges this is definitely too much this is quite okay this is good for the fine structures the smart setting should see the fine details and it does it i think it's better than here and it should see the larger structures as well yeah, okay, it does it better than here, but actually if you look, this might be a little bit better than here. So I don't know what is better, it depends on what you are interested in. Five or smart or combination of that might be a good uh, choice in this case. Next line is prefer high or low frames. This parameter is useful with transparent objects. That means you can gradually enhance or suppress information and structures from deeper layers. I'm showing an example. Here we have a diatom again, and the preference is set to zero on the left and to 70% on the right side. And you see there are some little arms, some extensions, I don't know how to name them exactly. And you don't see them quite well without the preference because the background here has a very strong pattern, very strong structures, and these have a better score than these little arms. And if I say preference of 70% should be applied, then these things are visible. Here you actually don't see them at all. And here you can see, okay, it's here. And here it's much, much better. So it's a useful thing and it could be vice versa if you are interested in things that are hidden in the lower structures. You could give a preference to the lower uh, 
uh, structures as well. Yeah, next is the image alignment. Quite an important thing and you should know you have to decide whether it should be applied or not. Click it or not. And the rule is with close up and macro images, you normally need alignment with the micro photograph. Is it depends and quite often you don't need it. And it's always a compromise, so then you should switch it off. What does the alignment do? It corrects displacement on the images, rotation and size differences. So if you are in the close-up range and you can cl come closer, things will appear a little bit bigger and this has to be corrected. Therefore, with the close-up and macro uh, images, you should use it. And the displacement is always done if you activate alignment and the uh, rotation and size corrections can be switched on under options and for rotation it's the default off because normally you should avoid that you are rotating your uh, specimen or your camera. Okay and there are two choices either once or twice and if you do it one times uh, it does the alignment on the fly during stacking. Stacking starts with the last image and then the images are analyzed and everything is aligned to the last image. And if you do it twice there will be a first run <coughs> where all the images are aligned to that in the middle of the stack. And then the results are saved with new name XY and the original name and then the align once is uh, repeated as well. And the advantage here is that the distances you have to cover are smaller if you start in the middle compared to the start at the end. If something is wandering and we are going to look at that in a uh, minute, but you can try. It takes a little bit longer to do this twice. Okay. Here we have examples. This is a macro photo from a binocular stereo microscope. And actually, if you have that, you really need the alignment. If you don't do it, it's not a nice result. You can see these white dots are becoming lines because when you are looking with a stereo microscope and you are changing the focus, it will not be uh, in line with your optical uh, axis. And therefore, you have to do some corrections to see the same point of the object in the same, same point of the picture. And this is mandatory in that case. No question. I have another example here, a micro photo, the hundredfold uh, objective. And you see a piccolo image here on the left. There's no alignment in this case. And here is a stack done with the same images with Affinity Photo. And unfortunately, one cannot switch off the alignment to this program. And you see the quality of the result is much worse because there are halos and shadows wandering when you are going through the stack. And this uh, Affinity Photo tries to compensate for that. And then you see here are the structures lost here as an additional thing coming up. It's not, sorry, it's not uh, really round anymore. So in this case, it's better to avoid the uh, alignment, definitely. So one useful thing is this parameter, test for filter settings. And it means just try out different settings of the parameters. And this takes only very few time, it's a few seconds more, and then you have four different results. Uh, standard uh, settings and suppression 6 and filter of 3 and filter of 9. And you can compare the results and that will help to find the perfect settings. It does not mean that one of these is the perfect one, but you can see, oh, this is quite nice and close to what I would like to have. This is far away. And it helps to get better results. And it doesn't take much time. 
So, then there is another parameter, auto enhance. What does it mean? It leads to enhancement of contrast, sharpness, and color saturation of the stacked image. Yeah, they are looking more crispy and a little bit more colorful, but actually, I'm not recommending this very much. It's for beginners, and if you are not willing to do the to use the image enhancement functions of Picolet, then you could try it, and sometimes it gives a better result. Uh, normally, I would always lose use the image enhancement enhancement of Picolet. It does definitely a better job. And one thing: do not use this function when you are later cloning something from the originals to the stacked image because the stacked image has been changed by these in, in these parameters. So then avoid it. It's for beginners. So last not least, the depth map. This is generated every time, but it's not automatically saved. You have to click it here to choose it. And definitely it's a must have for 3D fans because the map can be used to make synthetic 3D images. And you can have the maps obtained with different parameters and then you can combine them and can play around with them. You can edit them and so on. And therefore, for 3D fans, always use the safe depth map, map option. Yeah, that's it already for today. Thank mm -hmm. you.